Oh, hey there, everybody. Didn't know. It's a fancy meeting you guys here. Welcome back to the freaking show. We're on the top of a mountain again today because we seek to bring you good-looking content. If you come here looking to learn things, you're probably on the wrong channel. We seek to keep you entertained and uh, fueled with interesting, cool gear. If you learn something, that's a bonus, everybody, okay? Not an educational. We are not fucking Neil the science guy or whatever the Neil the astrophysicist is, okay? Bill Nye the science guy. Bill Nye. Um, <coughs> today on the show, we are talking about the Holosun 510C. It's an optic that I've been playing with, running for a few months. I'll kind of get into some of the background of that because um, it seems like it's a bit of a polarizing, Holosun is a bit of a polarizing subject, so we'll break that down a little bit. Before we start breaking this down, um, look, you're here, you're watching it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your life. I can't be any more nice about it. Fucking subscribe to the goddamn channel, everyone. Like, I, fuck, you at home, I'm talking to you. Subscribe, hit the fucking subscribe button, turn on the bell notification. If you don't do it, I'll find you, okay? I will find you. And I will kill you. I'll find you. It's not a threat, but it could be a threat, okay? I don't want you to take it as a threat, but it could be a threat. Um, there's that. 1911 Syndicate behind the scenes. This is a great segue. It's a real estate company, and uh, we run a professional operation. We'll sell your house, or we'll help you buy a house. If you want to buy a, uh, if you want to buy land to shoot on, which is everyone's favorite fantasy right now, that's probably not going to happen because you're probably not sitting on millions of dollars. So we should go ahead and start shutting that one down, everybody. But you can go to 1911syndicate.com. Hit us up. We'll get back to you. And then last thing, if you're feeling generous this holiday season, it's not a holiday, but I'm just trying to honey dick you into getting your money, right? Um, like, if you're feeling generous this holiday season, you can go to our Patreon page. You can donate to us. There's really no minimum uh, as long as the minimum is high, okay? That's kind of our general threshold. Now, that said, as we start getting into the hollow sun, uh, I have no relationship with hollow sun. I don't know them. I I remember right I think I might have messaged them a few months ago and uh I don't even remember what about definitely never heard anything back so uh, oh no no no! I did get to the point where I had a uh, a form I was supposed to fill out in order to you know help get some product at an industry price and that never went through so thanks um so anyway no relationship with hollow sun paid for with cold hard bitcoin cash which is an oxymoron by the way um so let's start getting into the hollow sun here. A little bit of background. My name is Jake Dwyer and I'm a gear snob, okay? And I'm fine admitting that to you. I like nice gear. And because of that, I've always had a little bit of a stigma and a little bit of a bias against hollow sun. But over time, I started to kind of warm up to the idea of like, well, maybe they're actually making really good stuff. And, you know, I, I picked, I've picked up... One, two, three hollow suns now, and um, we'll kind of get into it a little bit, but I picked it up. Why did I pick this up? Really, I picked up this optic as a demo optic. When I say demo, I just mean, hey, look, sometimes we get, case in point, get guns in, and we need to do reviews on those guns, and instead of buying new optics all the time, I'm like, look, let me just have like a, a demo optic and light that I can just kind of rotate around guns. So I've had this 510 on... I mean, at least three that I can think of, maybe more guns at this point, just kind of between sub guns, rifles, whatever it is, um, or, or just those two actually. But uh, it's bounced around, and so I've had a, a healthy amount of time and, and rounds through it and all that good jazz. So here's the easiest way to think of the 510C. Think of it like a giant 507C, also a hollow sun. That would be their sort of like kind of standard go-to pistol red dot that you'd run on, you know, your Glocks or whatever. It would be their equivalent of like an RMR. So what you have is an open reflex sight. What does that mean? If you're a little bit newer, because I know we in the gun community like to assume that everyone knows everything, and if you don't know what we're talking about, then screw you, get out of this community. Or maybe we should welcome new people into the community. So what that means is you have an open emitter, essentially the thing that, this is not a science channel, bro science disclaimer, okay? Basically the thing that is projecting the red dot under your glass or your little screen lens here is exposed, right? So it is exposed to environmental concerns 
things like grass. That was, I meant to grab a big handful, but I didn't feel like bending over, so I just got the little edge of, you know, mud, uh, rocks, rain, snow, sleet, hail, you name it. It is exposed to those things. Is that a problem for you? I don't know. I think it depends on what you're doing. There's some pros and some cons to it. The pros would probably be overall price point is going to be a bit lower versus a closed emitter. So a closed emitter is going to be something like an EOTech. And frankly, I bought this with the intent of it operating kind of like an EOTech. I wanted something that not so much concerned with shooting at 600 yards, but something that was like good on sub guns, good on an AR, you know, quick. I do like EOTech reticles. We'll talk about that. That was my intent with it. So the open emitter thing, it's really going to be up to you to determine if that is a deal breaker for you or not. Okay. I'm not really going to comment too much on it. A little bit though. One thing you have that I really like what EOTech's doing with all their uh, optics is you've got multiple reticles. So you can take your pick between either a nice little crisp red dot or an EOTech style reticle or basically the EOTech reticle without the dot in the center. I don't know what kind of weirdo would run that particular reticle option. It seems like you're either going to run the red dot or the EOTech reticle, the one without the red dot in the center of the EOTech reticle, like who, what kind of fucking psycho um, is using that reticle, okay? But I love that they've got multiple reticles because that is not the case with the aim points and the EOTechs of the world, the established brands. SIG's doing some of that. I like, frankly, a lot of what SIG's doing with their optics. We'll probably at some point do a review on one um you've got red and green models so if you really like green if you really like red cool and take your pick i don't really give a shit much one way or another my understanding is that the green reticles um consume a lot more battery life basically red dots are largely you know like red dots are red i i get it i get the lunacy of what i'm just saying there but red dots are mostly red instead of a different color because red is like the uh the color that uses the lowest amount of energy aka extending the battery life so you'd have to check this to see if that's still the case on the green but i know on mros don't get the green get the red uh you've got uh up to fifty thousand hours of battery life that's on setting six have i tested that no i don't even know if i've owned this thing for fifty thousand hours right but that's what it's rated for you got 12 brightness settings uh 10 of those are daytime two of those are night vision so for you who are running uh nods yes you could run something like this and still run your night vision solar fail safe probably i mean definitely one of my favorite things about the hollow sun is the fact that essentially you won't really be able to tell but up on top here you've got what i can only assume is basically is like a little solar panel right so that if your battery dies you go to back up solar power and that's a fantastic option and, and that's the kind of stuff where you just go man as much as I love Trigicon products, I think that Hollow Sun is eating their lunch a little bit on some of the features that they're actually putting onto these. Solar failsafe, very, very cool. Shake Awake, another nice feature, which is <coughs> probably part of why it has such good battery life because essentially, hey, look, if this thing is not moved, it's just sitting in your safe, it will shut down after a while. And as soon as it gets a little, little shake, I don't know how tremendous the shake has to be but once you get that little shake it's gonna power back up and you got your red dot so in theory hey like whatever you're sleeping and you're camping and now there's a fucking like grizzly bear or something outside your tent and you grab your rifle and you bring it up hopefully your dot is back on at that point i don't know why i did that so aggressively when i did it but i think i went into like there's a grizzly bear mode and i you know i just sprung into action easy to access battery compartment the battery compartment is basically on it's on the opposite side, but basically it's just right here. You just back out two little little hex screws, out it comes, you put in a 2032, new battery. So you don't have to take this off and worry about re-zeroing re it or anything like that. You know, this is for me one of the best things. Grade five titanium housing. And fuck grade four, man. Fuck grade four titanium housings. You know, when I saw grade five, I was like, man, these guys, they really know what they're doing over there. Um, 0.5 MOA adjustments. That's good. Um, that just means, hey, look, we can get pretty precise on zeroing this, whether you're doing that at 25, 50, 100, whatever it might be. Okay. So all that good stuff. So the mount that this thing comes on is a true co-witness mount, AKA look, if you've got iron sights on your gun, you flip those up, they should perfectly index with that red dot. It is a little low for my preference, but fortunately the way that this thing 
comes uh, much like an EOTech QD mount. You can just throw this on a riser. So you could throw this on something like a Unity riser. I'm sure there's other ones. Unity just happens to be my company that I have a little bit of a love affair with a lot of their products. So hey, look, if you're trying to bring this up to more like a uh, you know heads up shooting posture, this isn't bad, frankly, but if you were trying to bring it up to match some of your other EOTX, it might be on Unity risers or something like that. Piece of cake, assuming you can find those risers. So we've got that. You could also, by the way, if you're not going to throw this on a riser, but you just want to throw it on a different mount, also not a problem. You can basically take the optic itself off of the um, mount that it comes with, and you could throw this on an entirely different mount as opposed to doing just a riser. So know that. Little bit of, okay, what's it like, opinion, all that good jazz. you got a really nice field of view. Um, I would say it's got to be pretty damn close to like an EOTech. Um, I haven't measured the you know overall size of the screen, if you will, but it's got to be pretty damn close. Great field of view. Um, very fast to acquire, and that's largely why I got to this. Got to this, man. Just start melting down towards the end of the day here, everyone. Um, largely why I got this, I was looking for something that was a little bit fast. That way I could be fast and, you know run guns on camera and shit like that. It is fast to acquire. I like that about it. I'm a fan. Bear with me. Uh, what's interesting is that, so I leave it on the EOTech reticle. That reticle is so much more clear to my eyeball than an EOTech, than an actual EOTech. I, I mean, I'm trying to, I haven't done enough homework to know what that is, if that's just the difference between closed and an open emitter. There's a part of me that thinks that's it, even though I can't scientifically tell you that's what it is. But if you, for those of you who look through an EOTech and you're like, if you look at the actual reticle, all you're gonna see is basically a bunch of red dots in a rough shape of an EOTech reticle, okay? And what you have to do is you have to look through the reticle at the target and then the reticle kind of magically clears up. That's not the case with this. Yes, you're still gonna be looking through the reticle to um, ID that target, right, and get rounds off, but you can legitimately take your eyeball, look at the reticle, and it's still gonna be clear. And that, for my eyes that are a little bit shitty anyway, um, it's a nice feature. I've got a very crisp, very clear reticle. It's not something I was expecting. I was expecting to get the EOTech treatment, and I really did not. Let's see, cons. It's not American made and that's gonna be probably everyone's biggest issue, at least potentially, is, is they're like, hey, look, it's, you know, it's Chinese stuff. I haven't, look, I'll, I'll tell you straight up, like, I didn't even look into that. I'm gonna take everyone's word for it on YouTube comments that it's, you know, a Chinese-based company. I, I can't validate that. I'm gonna assume that that's true. So, hey, look, if that's a deal breaker for you, if you're like, look, American made or bust, I get it. I'm actually not dinging you for that. I'm just saying, hey, look, there's, I, I like the sentiment of that, but also sometimes I'm like, you know, I just need a reticle that's like 300 bucks instead of 800 because I'm not even going on guns that I own. You know what I mean? So you make your judgment call on that. I really, really wish that Hollow Sun would chill out on their fucking logos. Um, their logos are on both sides of the damn optic, and they're just too big. And frankly. If I'm throwing a hollow sun, like I have a hollow sun 507C that's going on a 2011 that's almost being done built now. And the first thing that will happen with that optic, because it's going on a very Gucci gun, is it will be Cerakoted black. Um, and I'm Cerakoting over the logos. It's just, I get it, everyone's kind of a branding whore and you like your shit out there. The logos are just too big for me. That's my personal preference. Um, the open emitter thing, you're gonna have to come to your conclusion on that depending on conditions if you were like i look at it like this okay who's the optic for i think it's for, it's not a battle optic if i was hypothetically like okay we're in the hills of afghanistan right now right and i've got harsh desert conditions i might be out for days at a time hypothetically or or i'm in some sort of environment where there's you know heavy mud and i'm going to be down and i'm going to be going prone underneath vehicles and those kind of conditions and stuff like the open emitter could cause you a little bit of an issue could you source you know of course clean it and get it 
polish back up so you're looking good, sure. But look, the open emitter thing could be an issue based on environmental concerns. This for me, again, is a demo optic, okay? It's not on a battle rifles that are in my personal collection. It is for throwing on a gun that I'm gonna have for a month or two months or whatever and running drills. And it's probably never gonna get harshly, harshly used. So for me, it's perfectly fine. For you, it's gonna be application based whether or not you think it's good. I will tell you thus far, look, it's been nothing but reliable. And as long as it continues to be as reliable as it's been, and I have no reason to assume it will not, I recommend it. I think it's a good optic. And like, look, this thing shipped out the door to me was 275. And again, if I'm talking about for a demo optic, especially spending, you know, 750 bucks on an EOTech or 300 on something like this, I mean, we're like, dude, it's an extra 450 bucks for an optic that half the time is just sitting on a safe or then on a demo gun that's not even my gun in the first place, right? So for me, it fits a niche that I actually needed to fill. Um, for you, you gotta use your judgment. But in terms of it being fast, clear, reliable, predictable, all that good stuff, I, I legitimately, I don't have anything but positive things to say about it. So you do your homework, you figure out the rest, um, but positive remarks from me. And again, keep in mind, everyone, this is coming from a bit of a gear whore. This is someone that I do like nice stuff, and I'm not apologetic about that. And I've got a couple hollow suns I've been running lately. So there you go. There's your hollow sun 510C review. I hope it brightened your day, whatever day of the week this came out. I'm going to guess a Tuesday, but we'll see if my fortune telling is accurate. I think that's probably a Tuesday right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed your Tuesday. And I hope you enjoyed your bourbon or whatever margarita or drink that you had with this video. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.